My name is Mario Moser. I'm a chef at the Flying Pig Pub and Kitchen in Oceanside, California. Today we're gonna to be making a burger and a pork chop from uh, Stay Classy Meats. We're gonna go ahead and get our coal started here over on the Weber. So we're doing lump charcoal, because that's the way to go. Uh, if you're the kind of person that grills on gas, the first step would be to go buy a charcoal grill so you can grill properly, because gas doesn't count. So my favorite part of the animal would be this part here, whether that's a pig or a cow. If this were the prime rib on a cow, this would be the rib I cap. All that red meat, that's my favorite part of the animal. It's got flavor and it's got texture, or a lack of texture, I guess you could say. All this intermuscular fat, you can see all the white stuff running through it. That lends itself to flavor. And fat delivers flavor along the palate, and the more fat, the more flavor. So I got some Spanish paprika and a little bit of blended olive oil, so not pure olive oil because olive oil has a low smoke point, which means it'll burn on the grill and you'll get off flavors. We don't want off flavors. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of make like a slurry with the blended oil and the Spanish paprika. Grab some gloves real quick. Now you can see my fingers are kind of coated and this is just olive oil and paprika. We don't want to get crazy because if you're buying good meat, there shouldn't be a crazy marinade that hides the flavor of the meat. You always want to let the meat shine or enhance the flavor of the meat itself. So we're just going to lightly kind of like paint this on real nice like so. You don't want it sopping wet because when you go put it on the grill, it'll light on fire. All this olive oil will drip off and light on fire. You just want enough to coat the outside of the pork. Kind of massage it in there. Now we're also going to season early. I use kosher salt because I like the flakiness. Now you got to remember that Salt makes hot things hot and cold things colder. So if you don't have an even distribution of salt on the meat, you'll, you won't have e even distribution of heat on the grill. All right? So this, this is very important if you're, let's say, pan searing meat as well. But just good seasoning technique is basically the most you can do for the person you're cooking for. So season from up high, depending on the breeze outside. Yeah. And then just make sure you get a nice, even, liberally salted layer, all right? And we're gonna see it start to sweat after a little while because the salt's gonna draw out a little bit of the moisture but without making it dry, all right? We just want it to kind of dissolve and settle in, but like a light cure on things, and that will also help the end texture off the grill, all right? So we'll just flip these real quick. Same thing, even distribution, some nice flaky salt. We're gonna let those hang out for a minute while the coals get hot. And then we got some 80-20 ground beef from uh, Stay Classy Meats. Good stuff right here. So we're gonna break this in half because this is a pound. You don't necessarily want to go over half a pound. I mean, you can, you do what you gotta do, you know? But that's a lot of meat, it takes a while to cook. So half pound burger I think is generous enough here. All right, so with burgers you want to handle it um, the least amount of po as possible, all right? You don't want to mess around with it and mold it because then it just turns into like a meatball on the grill, all right? It'll form like a weird layer that, you know, takes forever to cook. Um, it'll take forever to get to like mid-rare, medium, which is what obviously we're looking at. And then we just want a nice disc, like so. All right. Nice, thick burger. Press it down a little bit more, like so. And that's about, it. that's it. All right, we're gonna let that one hang out too. All right, so while our coals are going, we're gonna go ahead and prep the vegetables, I guess you could say, the veg set, like we say in the restaurant, um, for the pork chops. So at the restaurant, we do a little bit of creme fraiche grits, and then we take shallots and garlic. We slice them up real, you know, not super thin, about an eighth of an inch or so. We have some Spanish olives here. I like to saute those up in a little, start in oil, finish in butter, and then braise in sherry wine and a little bit of chicken stock. All right, it's like a one pan pickup, lots of flavor. You know, it's sweet, it's salty, it's savory, it's all those things in a very simple, easy to consume um, dish. So that's what we're going for. So I got some shallots, some of the fat garlic cloves I picked out. So you can slice them like this if you want. Um, if you're at home, you know, always try to make like a stable flat item that you're trying to cut, you know, just so you don't roll, your knife doesn't roll over and hit your thumb or something. 
when you're at home. So we're just gonna go ahead, nice eighth of an inch or so, all right? So we have those, take our garlic cloves, same thing. Oops, I've got a little fat kind of slipped on me. We don't want to save the root end, that goes in the trash. All right, so our veggies are cut. We're just gonna have some olives real quick. So if you're cutting cherry tomatoes, grapes, blah, 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 anything uh, circular, a good trick, you can take deli lids, put whatever circular in between two deli lids, put the other lid on top, and just cut in between your deli lids, and everything is cut in half. Saves you a lot of time doing it that way. All right, so those are good to go. Our veg stuff is ready. Um, our burgers formed, our chops are seasoned. Um, we're just waiting on the coals now to get hot. Anytime you're cooking anything, you know, medium rare, medium, something that you're not gonna go low and slow, like ribs or brisket, you know, um, you want a hot grill, all right? We're gonna situate them, maybe not evenly. We're gonna push them off to the side so you, we have a hot side and a cold side to work with. And not too tight, because it'll inhibit heat, but you want them to, the coals to play off of each other. You want the big coals and the small coals all hanging out. This will give us a hot spot right here cold spot right here, so we can kind of manage our temperatures. All right, so managing your heat source is very important, whether you're doing brisket, ribs, or your, you know, grilling pork chops. So like I said earlier, since we're grilling something medium rare and we're not going low and slow, we need that hot spot to really get a good sear without overcooking. We're gonna put our grate on so that uh, we can get it nice and hot. Let that heat up, we'll put our lid on it. Keep things open, keep everything open. Monitor our temperature on here. Um, we're not going for overall temp. Like I said, we're gonna be grilling pretty much directly over the coals. So we're going for high heat, but we just wanna make sure things don't get out of control. All right, so. That's nice. All right, so I put the pork chops down. Um, I kind of angled the fat cap a little bit away from the coals, so if it renders, it doesn't light on fire, but you're still getting all that heat, all right? So we're gonna let those kind of sear over the hot spot right here um, for about a minute or two, then we'll quarter turn it, flip it, quarter turn it, move it off to the side, let it hang out for a minute, and we'll go ahead and let it rest, all right? All right, so it's been a couple minutes. We let a little bit of caramelization happen. So we're gonna go ahead and just quarter turn these a little bit like that. All right, just so we don't get too much caramelization all in one spot. All right, we're gonna let those, same thing, kind of cook for a minute, and then we're gonna go ahead and flip it, quarter turn it, and rest it, all right? All right, so now we got quarter turn, quarter turn. We're gonna go ahead and flip them. Let them hang out on the other side now, and pretty much repeat all of those steps over again. All right, we gotta, wanna be careful not to overcook these. So pork chop does not like going past medium. I prefer medium rare myself, especially on good meat like this. So we're gonna keep it nice and juicy. We're gonna have some respect for the meat, you know, and not overcook it and dry it out. We're gonna finish out on our last quarter turn here. Um, we got this thicker guy, kind of going a little slower than the thinner guy, so we're gonna move him and play off those hot spots that we were talking about uh, when we were getting the coals ready. So that's one of the good reasons why you do that. All right, we're gonna give it maybe a minute, minute and a half, and then we're gonna pull them and rest them um, so that we can let the juices stop literally moving around inside the meat um, before anybody cuts into them so it retains its juice and all of the flavor that that entails. All right, so now that we're about medium, medium rare, we're gonna pull these chops off. We're gonna go ahead and rest them, let them hang out for a minute before anybody decides to eat them, all right? Um, this will retain all the juices and just make it a way better, more tender experience for the guests or your friend or whoever happens, yourself, whoever happens to be eating this pork chop. All right, so I got the pan hot, add the butter. Um, we're gonna immediately start to smell it kind of, the initial milk solids brown a little bit. The rest will melt out. You add your veggies into the butter and just let them saute. That'll kind of cool things down, slow things down as far as the butter browning. Um, don't be afraid of brown butter. <laughs> Brown butter is delicious, all right? So now that we got crispy edges, it smells like hazelnuts and almonds and all the things that we were talking about, we're gonna go ahead and add the Spanish olives, all right? Add the olives, you're gonna, the juice and the brine 
that's residual on the olives is gonna kind of make a sizzling sound and kind of deglaze the pan a little bit. All right. So we're gonna let those kind of saute in the butter a little for like a sec. Just until it's almost dry and all that brine evaporates. Um, a term called au sec, which means like a dry pan. So that it kind of reduce down and flavors concentrate. So that we can just keep building flavors on top of flavors, on top of flavors, all in the same pan. All right, and that's the beauty of cast iron or French steel pans, things of that nature, is that you can do that in an efficient manner. So now that we're back to just butter, most of the water from the brine has evaporated and there's still a little bit left. We're gonna go ahead and take sherry wine, a sweet Spanish sherry, deglaze the pan with that. You can see how it almost forms a sauce immediately. It has a, like a creamy looking texture. Um, that's the wine emulsifying with butter in the pan. So we're gonna let that simmer, let all the alcohol cook off and evaporate. And then we're gonna add chicken stock to it here in a, one second. Kind of swirling the pan helps. It kind of helps the sauce come together. So we're gonna, gonna take this down kind of tight, you know. Uh, we don't want it greasy like before, where it, everything evaporates except for a little bit. We still want it to look like a nice sauce. So we're gonna go ahead and add the chicken stock to the pan to kind of almost water it down again so that we can reduce it back down to a sauce. So it's a lot of like expanding, contracting, expanding, contracting. All of that's gonna help lend flavor to the end result. Once we come back up to a simmer, we're actually gonna add a little bit more cold butter, which will help develop a, a nice creamy, uh, like nappe is the term in kitchen speak, um, or thickness or viscosity to the sauce. All right, so we're looking for kind of a, like a medium nappe. Now we're back up to a uh, simmer. We're gonna go ahead, add a little bit more butter, and then make sure we always season. Uh, let that hang out and reduce. All right, so I got polenta here, or grits, and I have a five to one ratio here. So whenever you're cooking grits, you want five parts liquid to one part dry. All right, now usually in a bigger pot, you're gonna use a whisk. I'm just gonna kinda stir this in. Now it'll start to kinda thicken almost instantly, uh, but you wanna let it cook. You really wanna let it bloom and become tender, or it's just, the grits are gonna be too gritty. Just keep stirring them so they don't stick to the bottom and burn, especially as they thicken. And you're gonna keep stirring it until you get a viscosity like this, starts looking real thick, um, like porridgey, I guess you could say. We're gonna go ahead and finish it with a little bit of creme fraiche and Parmesan cheese, uh, cause that's how we like to do it. I'm gonna test for seasoning real quick. Tastes good. All right, so we're gonna melt in some Parmesan cheese and a little bit of creme fraiche. Once that's all incorporated here, we're gonna go ahead and make a nice big pile, form a well. All right, sometimes it's fun just to play directly on the cutting board. We're gonna go ahead and take our pork chops. Lay our pork chop right in the middle. And then our sauce that we made, cherry braised shallots, garlic, and olives. All right, I'm just gonna plate those right on top, like so. Nice and briny. And then I'm gonna spoon some of that juice over the top of it. You have that get kind of caught in the polenta. And we're gonna finish with some pretty herbs. Um, some of these are like mustard greens, a little bit of edible flowers. Um, it's visually appealing and flavorful as well just over the top, like so. Nice and simple. All right, and that's the pork chop. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, season our burger. Uh, we're gonna go coast to coast, as they say, an even layer all over the place. Kind of press it in, all right. All right. Then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Bring out all the flavor of that meat, courtesy of Stay Classy Meats. Go over the Weber. And go ahead and go right in the hot, the hot spot there so you can hear it sizzle. Um, you don't wanna mess around with it too much, just let it cook and release. A little quarter turn, flip it, 
cook and release, quarter turn, done, all right? So you shouldn't mess with your meat too much, as they say. So we're gonna put it over the hot spot. You wanna hear it sizzle, um, so you know that it, you know it's gonna cook and then sear and release, so you don't wanna mess around with it. Um, it will stick, it'll fall apart, all that kind of stuff. If your grill's not hot enough, or if you try to mess with it too much, you don't wanna mess with your meat too much. All right, so now that it's cooked for a second, um, we're gonna go ahead and turn it. We're gonna do a quarter turn that direction, kind of press it a little bit, make sure it's staying nice and even. Don't press juices out of it. We're not trying to make it cook faster. We're trying to make sure there's no lumps. There's a big difference, all right? You don't wanna brick your meat. You don't wanna press it and push all the juices out of there. You just wanna let it do its thing, all right? Plan accordingly. The trick is to get it medium on one side, flip it, get it medium on the other side. Um, when you cut into the, the burger, you bite into the burger, you don't want it to be like rare on the top and well done on the bottom because that's just weird. All right, so you want to make sure you cook it evenly so the temps meet in the middle so that you get um, a more even layer of the juicy inner awesomeness of the medium rare burger. So that's what we're going for. All right, so now we quarter turned it. Um, it's ready to flip. See how it just releases, no sticking, no mess. We're gonna go ahead and flip it gently. Got a nice sear on it. Um, searing over smoke is the best because it actually imparts a smoky flavor. Um, and it's the same thing. So we're gonna go ahead and let this cook about the same exact amount of time so that the temperature all kind of meets in the middle like we talked about earlier, all right? So even though it is just a backyard burger, you know, there's always it's always good to take care and make sure you're cooking things properly, especially with the good meat. So we're gonna go ahead and do our final quarter turn here. Once again, don't press it to make it cook faster, just make sure that there's even heat being applied. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the cheese now. So the cheese melts and gets warm. I have crumbled blue cheese here. Uh, beef and blue cheese is the best. It's like peanut butter and jelly to me. Um, it's not that I don't like cheddar, because, you know, I get down on cheddar sometimes, but my desert island pick would be blue cheese on a burger. What we have here is a shallot jam. Um, it's almost like making a simple syrup with red wine vinegar and shallots, and then just reduce until sweet and tangy at the same time. Um, on a cheese board, you could use it as a garnish for a fancy blue cheese. So why not put it on some crumbled blue on your burger too? Because it's awesome. Now I got a brioche bun. We're gonna apply butter nice and evenly, but not too much, because it will light on fire if you get too crazy. All right, we're gonna use the, the kind of cooler spot that we were talking about earlier to toast the buns um, while the burger finishes. While our buns are finishing up, we're gonna go ahead and pull the burger. We're gonna let it rest. All right, just like the pork chop, letting it rest is a very important part of the process. It is part of the cooking process. It's not just a trivial thing. Now that our buns are nice and toasted, go back over to the board here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and apply some garlic mayo. All right, I could just kind of put it in the middle, spread it nice and evenly. All right, we'll go ahead and now that most of the juices have rested out on the board, it won't make your bun soggy. All right. We're gonna take some fresh arugula, like a nice peppery green. All right. Nice and tall. Stack that baby up like that. We're gonna go ahead and put a skewer in it. And you got the burger from the Flying Pig. And that's something we serve every day. That's our house burger, so it's the good stuff. All right, thanks for hanging out with us today. Check back in for more content. There will be more videos on the way. Go ahead and subscribe. I'm Mario Moser, I'm the chef at the Flying Pig Pub and Kitchen, and this is how we do our pork chop and our burger. Mm -hmm.